I now have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker today. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Salome Thomas L. Morning. Okay, folks, you do not sound like <laughs> parents who will not be receiving phone calls about sending money and helping me out. And students staying up late at night, waiting until the last minute to work on those assignments that you know are so important. This is a big day. So we're going to try that one more time. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. When I walked in this morning, I saw on a student's cap, it said, goodbye past, hello future. How important, but I think more importantly, do not forget the past. Embrace it, respect it, and understand the sacrifices that were made for you to sit in these seats today. Because there are many who would love to sit where you are, but they're not there. I want to thank the university for inviting me, for honoring me, and inviting me to speak uh, at your commencement. It is a great honor, and I'm very humbled, and I'm a little emotional right now, because I know what kind of world that our children live in. So when we were growing up, those of us who are parents and have been around a while, that when we were sitting in these seats or when we were able to finish school, it was, it was an accomplishment. But in today's world, for children just to be alive at 18 or at 21, it's an accomplishment. So I truly respect and understand the sacrifices that all of you parents and family members have made because it's not just your parents who have supported you, but there are times when your parents have needed to support of their family members. When you were young and you went out on that first date and you didn't call home like you were supposed to, you didn't come home when you were supposed to. I know it takes a village to raise a child, but the village is not pacing around at night waiting for you to come home. It's your mother and your grandmother and your father and your grandfather. So it's so important that we recognize and understand why you are here. And you are here because all of these people in the audience here understood that the first word in the parent's dictionary is sacrifice. And there's nothing more important than the success and the joy of our children. So I'd like you at this moment, before we move on with the program, is to just take two seconds and give your parents and family a big round of applause for all the love and support that they have given you. And when you get that first job, take your first check and go and replace some of that furniture that you and your friends <laughs> and the refrigerator you left open so often. <laughs> but when I was driving here today, I thought about my first trip to college. So I graduated from East Stroudsburg University in 1986. And back then, you know, you didn't have the the Blue Route and all these other major routes. So to avoid tolls, we would take the long road on 611 to get to the Poconos. And I thought about how as a, as a young kid growing up in the inner city of Philadelphia and in the projects in Diamond Street and being raised by a single mom and, and how so often my mother struggled and counted on those teachers. So my mother never owned a car, never had a driver's license those teachers and those university professors who made sure I was able to get to college and get home every year. And I think about when I became a teacher, my mother said, great idea, but just remember that every teacher is not a parent, but every parent is a teacher. She said, serve those children and understand. And when I wanted to become a principal, she said, just understand that supervising adults is the hardest job in the world. Working with children is the easy part. <laughs> 
And then in 2002, my mother passed away and my first principal job I started in 1999. And I'm the only one of my mother's eight children to graduate from college. And my mother said to me, And my mother said to me, as parents often know how to apply pressure, is before, before she left the service, she said, you make sure you get that doctorate. And I began then at U Lehigh University, and um, it was a struggle, and, and, um, and it's been a long journey. But I, um, I'm actually going to fulfill that commitment to my mother tomorrow. I will be receiving my earned doctorate after almost 20 years. And I thought it only fitting that Delaware Valley University invited me to come to you today, the day before. And I'm sure my mother is watching. And I kept saying to myself, why would they want me to come and speak? There's so many famous people out in the world. Why do they want me? And I said, my mother called someone, knocked on some, you know. <laughs> and our parents used rotary phones. They didn't have cell phones. So she dialed someone. I said, give him an, opp give him an opportunity to thank me because when he thanks me, he's gonna be thanking all of those parents out there who truly understand the importance but also sending a message to those young people who will go out, out in the world who are quick to forget the past and look forward to that future. But just remember that that future will be your journey. It won't be anyone else's journey, it will be yours. And you own it and you embrace those mistakes and you don't run from failure and understand that if you can look up, you can get up. That many of you have struggled, and many of you, <laughs> now folks, I just need you to understand one thing that you know when the commencement speaker is up, you're hoping they finish quickly so we can get through the graduation. <laughs> as is the university. So every time you clap, you use my minutes. <laughs> and we're on a shared family talk plan. <laughs> so it's not me, it's the audience. But I know you didn't come to hear me. You came to see these young people, some a little more seasoned, but all having earned the opportunity to be celebrated because they are a member, they are members of families, but also a school community where they are not tolerated, they are celebrated. And when I look in the audience and I look at these graduates, I truly can feel that this is a community where students are treasured and valued, but also you can see where women are empowered. And I think in the, in the world that we live in today, we have to understand that. I know, because I have, I have two girls at home, I have one graduating high school this year. You ladies are high maintenance at any age. <laughs> I only get about an hour ESPN every night. And I took women's studies twice in college. <laughs> but also understand the importance of raising these young men because they will be the backbone of our community and the backbone of our world. And it does not happen without teaching them the importance of education but also the importance of service. So as you graduate and you go on and you begin to think about sort of what is my mission, I want you to understand it is for you to go out and serve. And if you ever, ever think that service is beneath you, I want you to know that leadership will always be beyond you. And you must know that it is your duty to go out and help someone else sit in the seat where you are sitting today. If you don't have any other goal, if you go to another family member who you know has been struggling or who has really been contemplating whether they want to go back to school, I want you to go to them and say, you can be me because I was once you. I doubted myself. I didn't think I was worthy with the right support and the right love and the strength, the, strength, the courage, and the wisdom to survive that you can make it. Students, Parents, family members, university faculty, I am honored to be here today. Not only as an educator, 
who understands that it is important for our children to have a vision, but they must have a plan. A vision without a plan is a hallucination that you must know at this point right now, you must know what your call is when you leave this school, what your duty is, that you are to go out and you are to serve others and make sure that we improve this community. It is a tough world that we live in, but we can make sure that we make it a better place if we go out and serve and become leaders. I want you to choose impact over compliance. Don't just go and do your job. I want you to follow your passion. Your job will only be to get better at it. Go out in the world and represent your family and represent the university. And know that for one time, I'm going to be OK with you getting mad, MAD, because that MAD will mean you want to make a difference. Make a difference. Those days, parents, when they were coming, it's the worst day of my life. Or when you didn't give them what they wanted and you said, get over it. Because when we were raised, our parents only gave us two options, take it or leave it. <laughs> They've been struggling to understand that. But discipline is a form of love, and you held strong. And the result of your hard work, the result of the love that you have given your children is the fact that they are here today, ready to go out and make this world a better place. And I heard a little buzz that there were some students who heard I was coming to campus, and they said, yeah, I saw some videos of Principal L doing a little rapping. Yes, I rap too. But old school rap, I go in my classrooms and the students say, we don't want to hear that. We, you know, we want to hear from, from uh, 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 Snoop Cattle or 35 Cent. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, 50 Cent. <laughs> but I tell those young people, see, when we were growing up, you know, we had songs that, that, were, were, that talked about life. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. We have rappers who rapped about going to college. I'm DMC in the place to be. I went to St. John's University. And since kindergarten, I acquired the knowledge. And after 12th grade, I went straight to? OK, see, now you're showing your age now. <laughs> so students, just understand. The lectures conducted from the mic into the speaker. Who gets weaker, the king or the teacher? It's not about a salary. It's all about reality. Teachers teach and do the world good. Kings just rule and most are never understood. If you were to rule or govern a certain industry, all inside this room right now would be in misery. No one would get along nor sing a song because everyone be singing for the king. Am I wrong? I want you to understand that I came here today to ask you this one thing, to ask you to follow your journey, to follow your path and understand that you must choose impact over compliance and don't be afraid to get mad. Please go out and make a difference and stop praying for a lighter load and start praying for a stronger back. God bless you. Thank you very much, class of 2019. Thank you to the university. Good luck.